The Lord be with you. Falsha, welcome to Buntlody Rectory for our service of morning prayer on this, the first Sunday after Trinity. Our theme today is making space for God in our lives. And we hear in the Old Testament from the first book of Samuel, chapter 8, beginning at the fourth verse, how the elders of uh, Israel at the time were so taken up with being like other nations that they were squeezing out God and wanting to follow the crowd. And yet in our psalm, Psalm 138, God assures us that he makes good his purposes for us. And in our gospel, Mark chapter 3, Jesus is reassuring people who are with him that they don't have to be related to him to be his uh, brother or sister or mother or father that by just following his commandments we can be the brothers and sisters of Jesus. And so our morning prayer begins on page 101 in the book of Common Prayer. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his Spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord's name be praised. Our canticle today is the Venite, on page 103, reading verses 1 to 7. O oh, come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his and he made it, his hands moulded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The first reading is from the first book of Samuel. Chapter 8, beginning at verse 4. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, You are old, and your sons do not follow in your ways. Appoint for us then a king to govern us like other nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to govern us. Samuel prayed to the Lord. And the Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people in all that they say to you, 
For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them, just as they have done to me from the day I brought them up out of Egypt to this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so also they are doing to you. Now then, listen to their voice only. You shall solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. So Samuel reported all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, These will be the ways of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots, and to be his horsemen, and to run before his chariots. And he will appoint for himself commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties, and some to plough his ground and to reap his harvest and to make his implements of war and the equipment of his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive orchards and give them to his courtiers. He will take one-tenth of your grain and of your vineyards and give it to his officers and his courtiers. He will take your male and female slaves and the best of your cattle and donkeys and put them to his work. He will take one-tenth of your flocks, and you shall be his slaves. And in that day you will cry out because of your king, whom you have chosen for yourselves. But the Lord will not answer you in that day. But the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel. They said, No, but we are determined to have a king over us so that we also may be like other nations, and that our king may govern us and go out before us and fight our battles. Samuel said to the people, Come, let us go to Gilgal, and there renew the kingship. So all the people went to Gilgal, and there they made Saul king before the Lord in Gilgal. There they sacrificed offerings of well-being before the Lord, and there Saul and all the Israelites rejoiced greatly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The appointed psalm this Sunday is Psalm 138, which can be found on page 753. Psalm 138. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise to you. I will bow down towards your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. In the day that I called to you, you answered me. You put new strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he watches over the lowly. As for the proud, he regards them from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will preserve me. You will stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand will save me. The Lord shall make good his purpose for me. Your loving kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And so our Gospel for this Sunday is from Mark, chapter 3 beginning at verse 20. The crowd came together again so that Jesus and his apostles could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, he's gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of the demons he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? 
If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly, I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, He has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my lips and the meditation of all our hearts be now and forever acceptable to you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Well, just thinking about those readings and about the way in which popular culture demands that we do certain things and follow certain ways, I was thinking of my grandfather. Now, I never met my grandfather. He, he died at too early an age, but I hear f- about him from my own father. And apparently in early 1920s Dublin, my father's eldest brother, when he was just a baby, my grandfather, his father, liked to walk him in the pram around the centre of Dublin. They lived just off Parnell Square. And so down O'Connell Street, they would walk. Um, And my grandfather didn't really get, anyway, dressed up for these outings. He just went out, sometimes even in his slippers. My grandmother was quite anxious about what people might think of him, but it just went over his head. He wasn't concerned about what people thought of him. Uh, He he used to say, those who know me, know me better, and those who don't know me, well, it doesn't really matter. And just thinking about that, I was thinking similarly about the elders of Israel in the reading from Samuel. Samuel. They were very anxious about what others might think of them. So twice they argued with Samuel using the words that they wanted to fit in to be like other nations. And even though God had saved them and brought them through um, a, a escape from slavery, through the desert, into the promised land, they still wanted to be like other nations and have their own human uh, king. Uh, So Samuel warns the elders that whatever their plan is, it has its downsides. And he goes into it in some detail that really this ideal king can turn out quite quickly when the power goes to the head to be quite a dictator. And the biggest downside, however, that they face is that they are rejecting God. And without God to guide them, they are effectively flying blind. By putting their faith in a human rather than a loving almighty God, they are taking their chances. But as we know, it ended pretty badly for them. Um, And uh, it it required the coming of Jesus really to teach them uh, about the merits and the need uh, and the benefits of following God Almighty.
And this is a choice for us too. Do we go with the flow in whatever the popular culture of the time demands? Or do we lean on God, the unchanging, the creator of the world, the one who, as in our psalm we read, even though he is a very, very powerful, um, mighty God, he relates to the lowly, to the humble, to those who are in need. And we know that when the going gets tough, uh, we can feel let down. The elders felt it, talking to Samuel, and we can feel it uh, too when things are not going right, with illness or you know, when we're facing a terrible tragedy. But a wise woman in this locality said to me just on Friday, when it's tough, I get my strength from somewhere. And that, to me, is the strength that God gives us. And how can we know that God gives us strength? Well, we can read about it in the Gospel, and it makes very clear sense to me because of Jesus Christ. And one of the huge advocates of Jesus Christ in the New Testament is Paul. And when he writes to the Philippians in chapter 4, verses 12 to 13 he says i know what it is to be in need and i know what it is to have plenty i have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation i can do everything through him who gives me strength so the god who gives us strength needs to have space in our lives and if we can give god space through prayer just taking time out just sitting with a bible and just reading maybe from philippians 4 as i just read there we can feel the guidance the comfort and the help and the presence of the living god in our lives and even if we are suffering, as we read about in Paul's letter to the Corinthians, his second letter, chapter 4, verse 17, he says, This slight momentary affliction is preparing us for eternal glory. And so sometimes our suffering has to be seen in the context that God, who also suffered, knew that there was, through Jesus Christ, a redemption, a way to look forward to a brighter days ahead. So let us live with our Lord Jesus Christ as the King of our lives and just ask ourselves, who needs to be worried about following the crowd when we have Jesus as a brother, a friend, our rock and our redeemer? Amen. Let us turn to page 112 and we say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, 
for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide and defend our rulers, and grant our government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness, and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people, and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and renew us by your Holy Spirit. And our collect for this, the first Sunday after Trinity. God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because through the weakness of our mortal nature, we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in keeping of your commandments, we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. On page 114, we say the second collect at morning prayer. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and ever-living God, we give you thanks for bringing us safely to this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger, and in all things guide us to know and do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, through Jesus Christ our Lord and by your Spirit, you give us strength, guidance and comfort, especially when things are tough. We thank you that you are as close to those who do your will as a loving brother. Help us to make space for you, Lord, in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the Church of Christ, for Michael our Bishop, and for all who God is calling to full-time ministry. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of Myanmar in Burma, led by Archbishop Stephen Than Mint, Ooh. And in this diocese, Lord bless Canon Patrick Harvey and all in the Abbey Leaks Killermock Union of Parishes. In our own parishes, bless our church wardens, treasurers, and all who fundraise, clean, maintain, and minister in your churches and throughout this parish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for the world, created by your love on this World Environment Day. We pray for its nations and governments, especially for the Irish government, the Health Service Executive, and this time especially the people of Limerick dealing with another surge of COVID-19 infection. Give us all wisdom and patience at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all who bring us joy by their celebrations of love, especially our sixth class teacher in Carrickduff National School, Keith Doherty and his fiancée Aoife Frisby, married in Tremor last Friday. And as we approach the start of the Leaving Certificate, we pray, Lord, your blessing on all students preparing for these exams. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask you to bless all who are not well this day. We especially keep in our prayers Gertie Earl, Sam Deacon, Ken Rothwell from Kildavan, and Ken Rothwell from Money Dirtlow. Mabel Brownrigg. Those confined to their homes. And those awaiting treatment. Give them all comfort, Lord, healing, and a sure confidence in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
In our own prayers, we just keep silence for a moment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we are an Easter people who know your promise of eternal life. We thank you for your everlasting love to those who have gone on before. Bring us all to bow before your throne in the heavenly Jerusalem, where pain is no more, and we see you, Father, face to face. We bring together all our prayers in the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And so the Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our blessing, go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage, hold fast to what is good, render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honour everybody, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be upon you, and upon all those you hold in your heart and all those for whom you are praying this day and forevermore. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>